Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Grand Avenue Church of Christ here at 619 North Grand Avenue. We indeed thank for God for blessing us to see yet another day. Amen. 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 This and some places around the world and even here uh, on today is considered Easter Sunday. Uh, but uh, here in the body of Christ, we recognize the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior every Lord's Day. Amen? Amen. Amen? So today is just another one of those blessed days that we see that God has blessed us to be here. Amen. And we're so, so thankful for that. With that being said, we're thankful to everyone that is visiting with us this morning. Wherever you may be from, uh, we're glad that you came out to be with us here at Grand Avenue. Whether you're present uh, in the audience or you're viewing us via uh, the, uh, the monitor, uh, at home, your screen at home, we want you to know that you are very much our, our honored guest. The week has been a trying week. And if you've listened to the news, you, it, it, it can uh, stress you out on some of the points and some of the things that can, it can vex your spirit. It can, it can cause all kind of uh, hardship and animosity. It can do a lot of things to you if you're, if you're viewing the, and watching the news. But if you're studying your Bible, all that anxiety and all that frustration and all that hardship uh, can be easily uh, set aside and can go away. Yeah. If you put God in the plan, put God in the mix and just don't trust man's viewpoint on the things that are going on, uh, you will be uh, so surprised and so happy about what things can be uh, dismissed from your heart. So I said it to say, study your Bible. Uh, give God more time. And uh, that idea of television and all the things that stress you out, give that less time if any time at all. And uh, I guarantee you, you'll come through a week feeling a whole lot better at the end of it than you did uh, when you first initially started. I do want to say to Sister uh, Jamisha Gaines, I do want to say thank you. Uh, if you've noticed, and maybe you didn't notice, that on the walls as you come in, is there there's a little, a little gadget up there. It takes your temperature for you. All you got to do is stand in front of it and just be still for a few minutes and the little green light will come on. Tell you that you're okay. <clears throat> or a little red light will come on and tell you you need to go back out that door. But no, we just we just know that it's going to be, everybody's going to be all right. It's, but we thank you so, so much, <coughs> Sister Gaines, for heading that up and, and getting those installed. And also, we're still doing the handheld temperature controls uh, for the little bitty kids that come on, that come in and everything because they can't reach it. And so we, we, we still have it in and we're backing it up. But we're, we're indeed excited and thankful for your sister Gaines, uh, Gaines doing that. And when I made the statement about going back, we don't want anybody to leave Grand Avenue. We want you to come in. We'll make a way uh, some way because your presence being here is so, so important to us is that we want you here. CDC is breaking down some of the laws and some of the expectations of the mandate, but as I say always, we always try to, uh, until that mandate is completely resolved, uh, we want to keep trying to keep ourselves as well as those who come into our presence in this facility as uh, safe as we possibly can. So we appreciate again all that follow uh, the requests that we have here at Grand Avenue and wearing your masks and even the babies and wearing theirs. So we do, we do honestly appreciate that and thank you. For that. Today is a day that God has blessed us to see. Uh, let us rejoice and be glad, be glad in this day. Today, April the 17th, uh, at his shores, her shores, a marriage seminar will be Saturday the 23rd at the Howard Church of Christ, taught by Wayne and Tammy Roberts. So uh, that's coming up pretty quick. So if you get a chance to, please go ahead. Participate in that. Then the Greenwood Avenue Congregation has an adolescent and ladies day symposium that's going to be virtual. Saturday, May the 7th, uh, from 7 to 8, it says, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the 7th, on the 7th at 8 o'clock a.m. We will be here at the building uh, that morning and they will display the symposium on the sequence, screen. I'm sorry, on the screen, on our screens for Sessions 108, and if you would like to come out for that and join them, that would be uh, for that session. I guess I could turn around, because it's hard for me to see that thing. <laughs> That's why we 
I'm straining now. Uh, I'll come on that joint. Community Service Ministry, see uh, the post on the table of uh, the items that are needed and that are requested. Make sure they uh, get into the tubs that are beside the tables. As well as your, your little uh, containers with the uh, communion in them. You can throw those in the trash beside those tables as well. Remember all the sickness shut in in your prayers. Uh, loved ones and those who are, are, are going through bereavements uh, right now in, the, in their situations that they're going through. Funeral services for Sister Rachel Boyd. Uh, Boyd's dad will be uh, just coming up Saturday, April the 23rd at the uh, Fellowship Baptist Church, 615 South Travis Street, which is the old Church of Christ, Travis Street Church of Christ. Uh, visitation will be on Friday the 22nd from 1 o'clock a.m. I mean p.m. until 7 o'clock p.m. at Waldo Funeral Home. So if you have a chance to go in and pay your respects and regards to that, please uh, go in and do so. They are out of town at this time, and I'll just ask you to keep them, uh, Clifford and his family, in your prayers. They should be joining back today. Uh, also, keep the Linson, the Gillum, and uh, I know there was another part, but those of you who we mentioned last Wednesday, Kami Gillum had, had passed where she was funeralized on yesterday. And uh, just keep uh, the Linson family, David, and all those her children and everyone in your prayers. In regards to that, those are all the announcements that I have at this time. I'm so thankful again for everyone's presence. Keep Brother Shaw's family in your prayers as he possibly would, and he in your presence, he possibly would be traveling this week as well uh, to go down and visit with her. And uh, just really quickly, we want to say thank you to Brother Walker. Uh, if you haven't already seen, well, soon you will be seeing uh, Brother Walker coming on as our Wednesday night Bible class teacher and uh, sharing some wonderful information with us. So we want to say to him, thank you uh, for stepping up to that and looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. All right. With that being said, we're going to ask that you would bow with us as we go to the Lord in the word of prayer. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, it's once more and again that we come humbly proud and wonderfully thankful. For this day, and for all that you have assigned uh, for us to go through on this day, we don't know uh, what this day is going to bring as of yet. We just know we should be thankful for being able to see it. We ask you, God, that we will conduct ourselves in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. We ask that you will forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings as we come asking forgiveness and repentance. Then, Heavenly Father, we ask that you will be with all of our sick and shut in. Be with all the bereaved families and loved ones. We ask, God, that you would be with those who are traveling the dangerous highways now and will be soon. We ask, God, that you would just continue to be with our minister and your man, servant, Brother Shaw, both spiritually and physically. And bless him, Heavenly Father, to recall those things that, came, that were put up on his heart through this lesson that you have given him through the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Almighty God, that all that we do in this place may be pleasing and acceptable in our sight. We ask that you would with our visitors who we love and appreciate. We're so thankful that they came out to be with us today or are viewing us today. We pray that uh, their spiritual needs may be fed, uh, fed as well. Then we ask you, Almighty God, as we go forward, that all that we do uh, be done decently and in order. And it's in Jesus, your Son, our Savior's name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. 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 356. Want to be wonderful there? 356. <coughs> When with the Savior we enter the glory, let won't it be wonderful there? End in the troubles and cares of the story, let won't it be wonderful there? Well, now won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear, we will be joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? 
Israeli sit, camping towards Canaan land. Three, nine, six. <clears throat> You have it? Let's sing. I will leave this land of bondage with this earthly treasure. I'll turn it to a place where there is love on it be hand. I'll exchange a land of bondage for a land of pleasure. I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land. Sister and brother, it's so good to see you. Thank God for you. Yeah. And all of you looking, whoo, y'all looking swell out there. Thank God for you. And I just want to thank God that we're still here. Amen. And pray. So let's go to him in prayer. Kind Father, 
Higher ground. First and the last time. <clears throat> Higher ground. Fourteen. You have it? Let us sing. I'm pressing on the upward way.
right with God? Is thy heart right with God? It's time I really, I really have a, another song. Would be alright if I sung a couple more songs, brother. I have one on my heart. I want to sing this song. It's on page four hundred. He'll wipe all tears. Page 400. You have it? Let us sing. As day by day I journey, I'm very often born. But to my heart a message on wings of love is born. Well, it tells me that it's coming a bright and happy day. When God, my heavenly Father, who will wipe all tears away.
this Sunday morning. Amen. 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 Always there waiting for us. Oh. And we just thank him for all the blessings of life. We need him, can't do without him. Amen. So I ask all of us to remember what he went through. And uh, there's nothing real happening about his having to die no more than that. He wanted to save us. Right. And to show us a better place than what we live in. Thank all of you for coming. Amen. God continue his blessing to me. Apologize to those men that got that shout out that we were going to be meeting Saturday. And uh, the two leaders we have uh, out of the city. And uh, in order for us to find out what's going on, they have to share the information with us. So we are, uh, I called some of the brothers that I could get. Some of your numbers is not on my phone when they changed me over. I lost 20 some odd phone numbers, contacts. And so I finally got me a phone and I'm working on it. I'm going to try to get it right. But know this. He's always there for us. You know, uh, Easter Sunday has been tacked in the wrong place. Uh, Easter Sunday is, is not a joyous time for the Lord who died on the cross. And a lot of us are not teaching our children what faces us. And we need to get it right before we hit judgment. Amen. We need to know that uh, Jesus died, yes. And I'm glad he died. For me. Mm -hmm. All right. For you. Because most of us uh, will forget and see that there's nothing, nothing happy about dying, leaving loved ones you love. Nothing about it. But I do want to share some thoughts with you. When we were small, when we were kids, uh, I was in a, another church, but I'm going to tell you something. Yesterday I talked to a, a gentleman, he, he was trying to sell me something, and I said, well, I'd rather, rather. you said, are you getting ready? Are you getting ready for tomorrow? All those Easter eggs and bunny rabbits. And I said, no, we don't celebrate that. I said, one thing that I do is celebrate his dying for me and giving up his life. That my family and my wife and all those I love can be there with us tomorrow singing praises to his name. What a joyful thing. And I, and brother, Walk across and man, where are you? <laughs> I said, man, I just, I don't have my phone uh, doing. Your number's not on my phone. And I couldn't get you. But then Mama finally came in and uh, he got a hold of me on her phone. I think that's what the phone he called. But I apologize to you. But we are, we're going to have a quick meeting one Sunday. Yeah, we got a, two funerals, I think, uh, coming up. I wanted to go to the one you were talking about, but I didn't get the paper. So we just say to those who have lost loved ones, God bless you, and may he guide you. And those that are traveling, uh, going to see a daughter, and we just ask all of us to pray and pray for uh, Clifton and his family. And, uh, it's just so many people leaving this universe. But we ought to love and care for everybody that we yeah. can. Know this. We all going to go. We all going to go one day sooner or later. But know for sure we need to get everything right now before we get to the judgment. Because we learn some things you see, Jesus, when he was teaching, taught that he was the king 
of the Jew. Yes. He, he came to make sure that we knew what we need to be doing now. And uh, many folk don't think about it, but this guy was just, just rattling on. And I said, well, let me just tell you something. What's so, what makes you so happy that somebody else had to die in your place? I said, what makes you so happy someone else died in your place so that you could go to heaven? And a lot of folk don't serve him like they should. And many folk don't thank him because he did do what he did. So I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you for singing those songs, my brother. And I just want you to know that you did a great job again. The Jews knew that Jesus had been teaching that he was coming to be the king of the Jews. And he was going to make a way for all of us. Somehow they got all uptight about what was going on. And they didn't like the idea that Christ was saying he was the king of the Jews because Herod, that Herod family was a tough family to deal with. And I'm telling you, uh, you, can, you can stay with him if you want to, but you, you need to be with the Lord. And all of us are. Well, accomplish more by being with him and not with somebody else. You remember the kingship is Jesus. Way back in the Old Testament in the, in the days of these kings said the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The God of heaven. He is that person and he's the person that I always want to look up to and honor because we couldn't we, we couldn't make it by ourselves. We would never have made it this far in the church. And so he just kept talking and finally another guy came up and he said, man, you must be selling this man everything he wants. And I said, no, I'm trying to sell him something he needs though. And I just want him to know that Christ didn't just die for Easter eggs. Y'all hear that? He didn't die for Easter eggs. He didn't die for burning rabbits and all of that. He died for you and for me. And that's what we ought to be thankful for, that he, he was willing to come and give up his life in heaven to come down here to make it right for you and I. And I'm glad he did it. I'm glad they did. Jesus is, in Matthew chapter 2, if you can, in Matthew chapter 2, I want you to Look at something and read it with me if you would. And then I'm going to go back to Matthew chapter 1. Because there are some things that I just think that most of us, we ought to hold on to. I'm going to read the scripture here that he, he read. But I'm going to read something to us to show us something that I think is very important. And, and a, a female teacher at Aberdeen told us, don't be joy jumping up and down because of Easter. He didn't die for that. He didn't die for that. He died, and what happened, what the Easter part that he got was out of Harrow family. The Harrows were some tough people to deal with. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that wasn't what he died for. Easter eggs, bunny rabbits, and teaching our kids those kind of things and that they can't explain back to you what's going on. So we all need to know some things. The Bible says, if you can, oh, you can't get it. Okay, well, I can read it. I can read it. The Bible says, and watch this, watch this. And I like it because those who understand the purpose of his death was to give us life. Y'all get that? The purpose of Christ's death was to give us life. Right. So when we, when we understand what he has done for us, mm -hmm. then that's something we ought to do for him. We ought to be ready to worship him in spirit and in truth. So watch what he says. When Herod heard that the baby Jesus was about to be born, he was terribly upset. He didn't want Christ to come into this world to be king of the Jews. Right. You can't stop God's program. You got to learn to live with it. The Bible 
Bible goes on to show us that this in chapter 2. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, chapter 2, chapter 2, the king Herod, the wise men from east, arrived expectantly, unexpectedly, excuse me, and in Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Aren't you glad he is the king of the Jews? Yeah. Yeah. Aren't you glad? Herod now, watch this. Herod now was so upset that Jesus is teaching he's born king of the Jews. Now they're mad about that. And so what they said was that we, we just won't have him as our king. How are you going to stop him from being king when God and the Holy Spirit all work together and they all got together and Christ was the one chosen to come and hang on an old rugged cross. Well. To give you and I a chance to go home to live with him. I want my home in heaven. He went to prepare a mansion for all of us. And I'm looking forward to a, a mansion for, for all of us. And we can all enjoy heaven with God. But then he goes on to say in chapter 3 says, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, repent because the kingdom of heaven has come. For he is the one spoken of through the prophets Isaiah, who said, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. That's what we ought to be doing. We ought to live so that people can see something in us that represents Christ and shows the word. Christ is ready to come out and do what he can for us. And I want him to do it not only for me, but I want him to do it for everybody in this audience this morning. Everybody in this audience need him. You got to understand Easter. Easter was not, I'm going to talk about it, Easter was not a joyful thing to eat eggs. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a joyful day to find and, and somebody to tell you that the, 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 the rabbit laid eggs. That's the lie you ever heard. <laughs> rabbit don't lay eggs. And we teach our children that if we, if we understand what's right about what the teachings of Christ. He didn't teach this. He didn't teach anything about Easter eggs. Christ taught that he was coming to give his life a ransom for you and for me. You remember what he said in Daniel 2.44? In the days of these kings, said the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. It, it's not going to be destroyed by anybody down here today. It won't right. be destroyed. You may, not, you may not understand it now, but we hope that you will. The Bible says in, in Acts chapter 12, watch this. Thank you, Bill, for reading the text. Peter had a, uh, a death in the family of the disciples. And not only did he, but I want us to understand this as well, that the church belongs to Christ, intending to uh, help the, us make heaven our home. That's what it's for. That's what it is for. We came that we might be able to get the hair of the king didn't like it. And because he didn't like it, and James, they killed James. Now, who gets happy just because somebody got killed? This is nothing to be happy about. He died for us that we might live. He died so that you and I can tell others the truth. That Jesus didn't want to have just to die, just to be dying. He died so that all of us could make that joyful mansion that he went back to prepare for us. I want my mansion. I don't know if I'm going to get a robe or a crown, but I know one thing. If I can get up there where Jesus is, I'll be happy. Now, I'm not going to be sad. I'm going to just be as happy, as happy as I can be. Many people dress 
No one gives Christ any clothes. But he's always ready to help us whenever we call on him. Call on him. Let him know that you appreciate what he has done. And I want to challenge every one of us to think about what happened to our Lord after they put him in prison. He put, now Peter in prison. Pardon me. Peter was put in prison, but James was put to death. Stephen was put to death. A lot of folk that stood with Jesus did it because they loved God. And then I'm saying to all of us, the Jews believed that the history was of the Jewish people were the most important things in the world. They thought that they had everything wrapped up, but they didn't have. They had to know that dealing with God, Harold Agrippa, I'm telling you something, he didn't like it, and he killed several kids on the age, from the age of two down to keep Christ from coming. <laughs> well, how foolish some people are. How foolish some people are. They think that because if they could kill Jesus, everything would be over with. Not true. He's doing things for us now that we haven't even thanked him for even last night or today. But we need to realize that Agrippa didn't care that much for Christ and he was hoping that he would die. And he did die. But what he didn't understand, he didn't understand that Christ said on the third day he's getting up. Everybody else that had gone on is still that when I die, I'm not getting up out of that grave like Christ did. When I die, I'm going to be dead and gone. Birdie may not have me no more, but the one thing I do know, both of us going to have to go one day. Both of us, all of us in here, going to have to go one day. Now, I know, I know Derek don't like to hear me talk like that, but we're going to have to leave. But guess what? He's going to go one day. And the main thing that I want us to understand is that I taught my children Right. Isn't that right? I would tell you, talk, tell them, Sister, Sister Boyd, a few minutes ago, I, I, a brother called me. And he always called me Dad. Hey, Dad, tell Mama I said, hello, y'all my second parents. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Somebody love you enough to call you their parent? That's all I'm concerned about is getting to know people and getting to show them that God has everything we want. Living for us, Christ is living for us, and the Holy Spirit is guiding us into all the truth. And that's what we all need. We need to come to Him and live with Him because He belongs to all of us. Peter had to go to prison. Peter went to prison. Herod couldn't stand him. He didn't want him around. But he went to prison. And while he was there in prison, the Lord shows us that regardless of what kind of problem you're facing, you can talk to him about your problem. You can talk to him and thank him for what all he has done for you. You can let him know, God, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here today. None of us would be here today. But I want us to understand, teach the children so that they won't go around telling other kids that I got these Easter eggs and I don't know. Did you all remember when we were young and we used to have to paint the eggs? Well, they had some guys who put on the eggs. And I thought those were the best boiled eggs you could ever eat. When I found out the truth, I said, wow, is that what we did to him? And have I asked him to forgive me for doing all that to him? I said, no, I don't want to keep doing this. I want to get with the Lord. I want to be there. When they found out that uh, Peter was in prison, he trusted God. You know, Peter was, a, was an evil man to himself one time. Mm -hmm. He was an evil man one time. But what, what happened, he had a change of heart. Yep. When he met, uh, met, met Jesus on the Damascus Road, he didn't know what to do. He hit the ground. He was afraid. Peter was afraid because he couldn't, he couldn't take it. We can take it. We can take it because we know better. We know how to live. We know why we live. Love for Christ.
Christ Jesus makes us worthy folk to call him Father. Mm -hmm. Call his Father and let him know what we appreciate what he has done for all of us. I woke up about 3 o'clock this morning. I went in there and went over my lesson again and I said, man, if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't have a life. A lot of us used to live all kind of lives. But we met up with Jesus. And that changed a lot of things in our life. I don't talk ugly. I don't curse. I don't do anything that I'm not supposed to do. I just thank the Lord that he has allowed me to live this life. Isn't it wonderful to know that all we have to do is to stay with the Lord and live with him. But then when we come back to Peter, Peter's there in prison. <coughs> I'm sure, I'm sure if it was you and me, we would be just as happy to see that angel standing down at, at, at his feet and Peter, rise quickly. Put on your pants and your shoes and get ready to get out of here. What a joy. What a joy. You know what I'm trying to get you to see? Jesus was so happy to fix it so that we don't have to stay in prison for things that we were doing for the Lord because we believed in the Lord. So that's why Peter had to go. He went in and God told him, told an angel to go down there and talk to him. Wake him up. Get him up. Tell him to put on his clothes and shoes and get out of here. And when he told him to get up, the chains that he had on him from the soldiers that were guarding him fell off his hand. Peter got up and got out of there. And he went over to where the church was praying. Oh, I don't want to lose this point here. If you got problems, go to God. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. For he cares for you. He cares for you. And son, I'm, I'm saying to all of us, these chains dropped off and people walked out of there and went over to where the church was doing the praying. Church, we ought to be some shown up praying folk. We ought to be thanking God because we sometimes feel bad. We sometimes don't have everything we need, but we have Jesus. Mm -hmm. You do have everything you need. Mm -hmm. You got Jesus. And as long as we've got Jesus, we got all we need. Mm -hmm. Can nobody else do for you what Jesus can do for you? I'm so glad. Peter realized that this was an angel talking to him. And he was so happy when he got up and saw that he was leaving prison. He was glad to say to God, this is what I need. Let the church be grateful that it has not been persecuted. Persecuted. Peter persecuted the Lord's church. We probably did a long time ago. But we love the church today. We want everybody to know where we wish. We want everybody to know that he has done us justice. He has put his life on the line so that we could have life on heaven's fair ground. I'm glad I'm a member of the Lord's church. I was going in the wrong direction. And I had to turn around. A lot of us were going in the wrong direction. But when we start reading and studying the scripture, we learn that somebody else cared more for us than we cared for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. They was trying to show us. Put on, on the screen, because I need to move on. Put on the screen Acts chapter 7, verse 51. And I, I want you to see something here. Stephen was another that died. Do y'all remember Stephen? Stephen was one that died. But then Stephen looked up and when he was dying, he could look up and he saw Jesus standing, looking at him. Jesus watches us. And he, he takes care of not only us, but he takes care of all of those that he loves. Look what he says. Ye stiff neck. That's what Stephen was saying to the people. 
you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. Don't be like those that won't come to Christ. Be like those who did come to Christ and decide they're going to stay with him. Don't leave him. Don't leave him. Stay there with him. Whenever we find somebody that's going to go with us and help us, we, did, we got somebody that will stay with us. Even he said this himself to the end of the world. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. How do you feel today? Having done all the things we've done against Christ, and now he is there just for us to bless <clears throat> us, to keep us safe from all danger. I'm saying this because I don't want any child to miss out on going to heaven. Teach them right now. Show them the right way. And let them know that all they have to do is to stay with the Lord and make heaven our home. James says to us, James chapter 5, <clears throat> that we ought to pray always. We need to pray. We need to ask God's help. And I saw some, some of my sisters coming in and the services that, that have had some shown up some sickness. One I saw come in walking real good. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. To know that you can get around still after what you've been through? Yes, it's a joy to be in Christ. As I prepare to close, I want you to know this much. Don't you forget Jesus. Don't forget him today. Don't forget that he does for us what we can't do for ourselves. Don't forget that he wants us to always be there for others. When we were children, and I said it earlier, when we were children, we thought there was nothing like Easter eggs. Until we saw a snake. <laughs> and look at somebody doing like that. A lot of folks can't stand snakes. A lot of snakes can't stand them. But I'm saying to us that we need to always be ready to do the will of God. Pray for those. We're going to have a prayer just a minute. And Paul just get to thinking about it. We need this prayer because we got some family members got to leave shortly after the service of this minute going to see their family. And I'm just asking you to prepare to leave prayer when I come to the end of my lesson. But one thing I do know, one thing I do know, is that this is a praying church. And when we pray, we get results. When we pray, we get results. Look at Sister Andrew looking so nice over there. What a joy it is to see her. God has blessed her very well. I'm seeing many others that's looking really good. So our brother. Goodman walk in. He just came back from way upstate. But he's here, thank God. So, some others I see here today. I'm glad to see you. I know for sure. This is not the day we're celebrating for Jesus. We celebrate the fact that he built the church and allowed us to become members of his body. He built the church. And he want us to go live with him throughout ceaseless ages. Isn't that wonderful? He didn't have to pay for it. Just listen to him, to his word. Come and obey what he ever said to us. Do God's will, church. And remember, remember, he has more blessings to give us than we have prayers to give him. But one thing about it, he loves us. He cares for us. Us. Care for him. Care for him. May God bless you to know that regardless of where we are, so many folk are scared to death what uh, Russia is going to do. You talk to God. Amen. God knows what to do to Russia. And one thing about it, we don't be sitting up here hoping, I hope they get him. I hope they get him. Man, we want everybody that can come to understand the truth to understand. Say things and say things. All those.
fingers that's been taken the line. Don't, don't forget. Don't forget. Those kids that died because Jesus' mother was getting ready to have her baby. Amen. People are saying, people are saying, he don't need to be here. What do you need to be? I want to be here as long as I can. Don't you? Amen. I want to be here a long time. We got a lot of fun. So, you all just, just hold on. Because there is a day coming when we will all rejoice. Because we get to see the Father, Son. Speak with the Holy Spirit and get to stay there for a long time. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to be a, a child of God and in the family of God. God has blessed this church and He's going to keep blessing this church. And I want to see more and more come to the Lord. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand what's going on, but God moves everything. People asking questions. Why does God let so much evil come into this world? Most of that that we face is done by a lot of us. We don't love everybody like we should, but we should love everybody. God will take care of us. For those who are be traveling, I want you to know. Wherever you go today, think about what he has already done. And so St. Jesus, may God continue his blessings Amen. upon you. And may you always know that we love you and we're happy when we can get to see you. All right? Now, I want to ask this of, of the church. Clifton and, and Rachel was with us for a long time. And when the services are if you are able, I'm going to ask you, please go and encourage the family. Because when you lose someone, it's hard to get over it. But God is getting over it because his son has done what he asked him to do. So pray for him. Pray for all of those who are sick. And God will definitely do things for us. I've given you Easter. Be ready to worship him in spirit and in truth. Be ready to tell somebody else that Jesus Christ is the man. Be ready to share his message with a world that doesn't know him. Let all the folk will die. I feel sorry for them, but then if they don't listen to God, he but don't you not do something. You do what the best, the very best that you can do. All right? Let us all do the very best we can. May this church continue to grow. May this church realize that we got the best hand in our land. How thine affections been nailed to the cross? Is thy heart right with God? Does thou count all things for Jesus but the cross? Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? What's in the
once again and come before your throne. Thanking you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. Thanking you, Father, for watching over us each and every day, both day and night. Father, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ. Walking here on this earth, Father, in the flesh, sacrificing himself for the sins that we have committed. Father God, there are many that have stood today before you. And I know, Father, that you have heard each and every one. But I would like to say at this time, Father, that we pray, Father, for the ones that are out traveling today. Yes. That they will reach their destinations, Father. Father, we have ones that have driven long ways to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Yes. Oh, how all across this country, Father. And we pray, Father, for them because those roads are dangerous. Yes, sir. And the people out there are dangerous. And we just pray mm -hmm. that everyone keep their cool <coughs> while they're rushing from place to place today. Father, we pray for the ones that are sick, Father. We pray, Father, that you will restore them for their good health. We pray for the ones who have lost loved ones and are dealing with that loss at this time. Father, we pray for the ones that lost loved ones months ago and are still dealing with the loss yes, yes. that they've had. And we pray, Father, that you just continue to be with them. And not only you be with them, Father, but we as members of the body of Christ be with them also, each and every day. Father God, we pray for the ministry here. We pray, Father, for Brother Shaw, both physically and mentally, Father, that he would keep your word, that he would teach us in a way, Father, that we can understand what you want us to do to save our lives. Because, Father, there are so many times, Father, that we get on the wrong road, and, Father, we need Brother Shaw and other ministers to just speak forward and let us know what we should do to get back on the road to righteousness. To one day see that home in glory that we all want to see. Father, these prayers we pray in the name of our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. time we ask that you would prepare your minds to take up the Lord's book and body and just share the blood. I will be sharing with you from Matthew chapter 26, beginning with the 26th verse. And it reads as follows. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. Until that day when I drink anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this blessed opportunity to come together and commune with your dear son, Jesus. Thank you for his body and his blood that we share at this moment. Remembering the sacrifices that he had to go through. Lord, I may an opportunity for us to see heaven one day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Ah. 
time, if you will notice the first Corinthian letter, the chapter is 16. First Corinthians chapter 16. And it reads as follows, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. As God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Pray for me. Father God in heaven, once again we come humbly bowed and so wonderfully thankful for whatever we have received. Monetary, it was because it was a gift and a blessing from you. Let us treat it as such. Let us give back that portion that so rightfully belongs to you because really and truly, to think of it, all of it, belongs to you. But you gave us an opportunity to keep some, to survive, to take care of situations. And even if we didn't have enough to do that, you are making it possible for us to get what we need. All that we got to do is call on your high and holy name. But at this time, we pray that the saints will do what is right, give not grudgingly, give not of necessity, but be a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name. Thank you again, Brother Shaw, for your message. We pray that it has done what it was designed to do. We thank the congregation as a whole for your participation and for your attention. We ask God to bless you, each and every one individually as well as collectively. We say to those that are visiting with us, you are very much, as we said before, our honored guest. We honor your presence here at Grand Avenue, and we're glad that you're here, whether you're physically or whether you're viewing us. We just want to say to you that we hope, trust, and pray that uh, you will feel comfortable coming back again and being with us. As already been mentioned, continue to keep all of our loved ones in your prayers. People are going to be traveling, and there's going to be doctor's appointments, there's going to be sicknesses, as much as probably already is. There's even going to be death somewhere. But we just keep God close. Continue to be able to call on Him. And not just call on Him, but get a response from Him. Because we can call on Him all day, but we have to be obedient in order for Him to be able to respond to us. God here is not sinless prayer. But those that would do righteous by Him, will serve Him, do what He asks us to do, those He hears and those He will address. It's time we're going to ask that you please remember to put your envelopes in the receptacles on the wall before you leave. We're even going to ask that if you have a way to get them there as soon as you possibly can to do so. Uh, I was looking for my, a couple of my brothers, but we have already talked about a way of making sure that they get where they need to go. And so we'll take care of that at the end of services. Were there any visitors here that, as a matter of fact, are there any visitors here that would like to stand? Anyone has a visitor that you would like to introduce to the congregation? Sister Renee, we're always happy to see you. <laughs> I always see Sister Mirage. So you look over Sister Renee and Renee look at Sister Mirage. <laughs> we know it's always great to see you. But I know it's a pleasure for your mom to have you there with her and uh, be in that company that she, she has. All right. If there's nothing else, we're going to ask that you bow with us as we close out. Father God in heaven, we thank you once more and again for all that you have blessed us to be a part of on this day and in this place. Ask as we prepare to leave and close these doors and to shut out the lights and to lock them behind us that we forget nothing that has been shared with us in this room here today. That we remember, Heavenly Father, because we leave this place, we never leave your presence. And neither do you leave ours. Let us account ourselves worthy of the blessings that we already have asked for and that we may even come asking for before the rest of this week is over. For sure, God, we're going to need you. For sure, we do need you. We ask you, God, let us be mindful of the fact that we are your children, those that are members of the body. And Heavenly Father, it's our duty to show ourselves as examples of what Christ would want us to be. 
God, keep in our records as we go forward throughout the brothers of this week. In Jesus, your son, I'll say this name. We pray and we ask it all. Amen. Amen. We do ask that everybody please remain seated except for those on the outer pews. And if you will pass uh, quietly, and uh, I don't say quietly, but if you will go ahead and pass, and uh, please not congregate, then we're going to ask those in the middle to be. Okay.